Well, hello again. This is Hero. Um, it's been a while since I've done a, a nursery tour, so let's do that today. Uh, today is the first week in December, and it's overcast, so it's a great day to shoot. Okay, so what we're looking at is the ginkgo, and they're one of the most uh, consistent uh, fall color plants. This is our Princess Persimmon. Uh, this one fruited very well. I have another one over here that did, but probably next year it'd be very sparse or sometimes nothing. I kept the material area over here. And then as we swing, Look at that maple. That's what it's supposed to do, uh, change color. But not always the same time and the same rate on the whole tree. Uh, let's take a look at this thing here. This is that Ichizukuri that I started this year, right? And what, what I thought would be, it looks good in the bonsai display area. Well, here's another one with the display. This one is Bonjing. Bonjing is the god of bonsai. So, you know, it never hurts to have some uh, help from the gods. Uh, it's part of the Shinto belief system. They have a god for everything. And so I found this thing about this for potted plants. So Bonjing is god of bonsai. Hey, a lot of us could use a little bit of extra help. Here's another one. It helps to complement, like my Bonua. See, the maples is changing. Yeah, I've seen it where it turned maroon, but um, you just never know what's going to happen. Here's a maple that's still in the material state, but that's what we're always hoping for, something that changes spectacularly like that. Hey, remember my trip to Montana when I came back? This thing uh, was overgrown, so I pruned it heavy, and then it burnt, and so I re replaced it, well, moved it over to here. And look at this color on this thing t this year spectacular yeah it's kind of lost its shape but well i got busy again uh here are some tridents these are the big ones and i'm trying to kind of let these grow wild so the big cut that i made has a chance to heal but it's starting to change color whether it'll turn uh, orange and maroon, not sure, but they do have a potential to have great uh, color. Uh, this is the material state. And you could tell which one is deciduous. They're the one that's changing color. And this sunny area, olives, Chinese elms, things like that. And this big one here, it's changing color, but nothing spectacular at all. A lot of elms in here, just barely able to contain as I get less and less material to work with, I'll hopefully have a little bit more time to spend on each one. I have quite a few uh, Chinese elms, but they don't all react the same. Some will lose their leaves, they'll, uh, others sometimes will hang on. Of course, now, if you move to the southern part of the state, uh, they're considered evergreen. I think in college we learned that these are half evergreen. So we're in this northern half of the 
California, it's uh, deciduous. But if you're in the southern half, it tends to keep their leaves. But you know what? They seem to be stronger and more vigorous when they go dormant. If you want good quality deciduous, shop in the winter. That's when all the leaves are gone, right? And then you could really tell the true quality. Make sure it has movement taper. This is a crepe myrtle. I think I'm gonna have to treat it. Uh, it had a little like black mold looking thing. Uh, uh, the horticulture oil, something like that should take care of it. Here's our Zelkova. It's got a fairly nice color, but uh, I just used the electric clipper method so that you can't see the structure. Uh, that's why I said, if you really want something great, uh, shop in the winter. Now, you know this has got a great base, right? But you just don't know what's up on top. But another couple of weeks, you will know for sure. Okay, so you can see all the different uh, Chinese elms, and they react differently. Oh, those of you who've been following me, remember this one here? We cut off a big chunk, and you can see that it's starting to heal over. Probably another two or three years, and a little bit of luck, this whole thing will be uh, healed over and that's what I try to do is take the time and make sure that it gets to be a good quality for the future rather than rushing it now see that uh, maple that's protected so it's a little bit slower but it's coming along and then you you know when you have uh, bonsai collection you want a mixture of evergreen and deciduous so that if you like deciduous your winter is going to be a bunch of naked trees and if you only like evergreens uh, like junipers and pines and things like that you don't get to enjoy the fall color oh yeah well those of you that are in the tropics like maybe Hawaii, I think you have a tough time enjoying the fall color uh, because it doesn't get cold enough. Oh, this is the liquid amber that I did the split. It was it got too big, so oh god, what three years ago I guess. Uh, well, that's half of it. Now this one is in the protected area with a 50% uh, shade, so it still has foliage. The other one in full sun, well I moved it out uh, as it started to get cooler. In the summer it was uh, protected. Well it did color up, but it's too late now. The wind came and blew it off. Yeah, I was saying the ginkgos uh, give you the most consistent coloring of all the plants, deciduous plants. But another week and or another wind or one good wind and then it's all gone. Here's our well multiple air layering boxwood. I have been checking and I still not sure if it's rooted in or not. It's uh taking a little longer huh so I still got these materials that this whole area got pruned at least three times last year or this year and it keeps coming back so well I'll check on the boxwoods 
probably as it starts to warm up in the spring. Oh, a while back, remember I took the big uh, boxwood and then I split it into three? Well, looks like they're all coming back. Uh, probably will not do anything next year. This one here needs to be recut and carved. I'll bring out my carving tool and then cut it so that it's a smooth transition. But the, the carving process shakes the root so if the root is just barely getting started and I get started on working on that, it will damage and then it could still die. So yes, it's going to stay in this well protected area and then you'll come out into uh, more of a normal area and then I'll get started. Oh, before leaving for Montana, I kept worrying about things dying when I'm gone. Well, this one here died after I came back. <laughs> I forgot to check. Well, I thought I was checking the uh, emitters, the automated watering system. So when I came back from Montana, I checked and it looked fine. Well, unfortunately, the part that was in the pot was okay, but it had uh, broken loose from the main line. So, yes, whether I'm here or gone, eh, occasionally you lose one or two. Well, the reason it's here is sometimes I've seen them come back. Uh, well, it's been a half a year. I don't think it's coming back. Remember this one here? Oh, my, I think it was last year. My grandkids were here and we were uh, talking about fire suppression, cleaning out some of the area so that uh, the fire doesn't go up the tree. Well, this is a umet uh, seedling that was underneath. So we dug it out and it has survived. Most of the time they do, but it is too tall. Straight trunk, uh, no taper. Of course not because it was in the shady area and fighting for the sunlight. So I started pulling these lower trunk and I'm thinking of maybe cutting it down about where that first branch that gets pulled down, right? Anyway, or the other way is if I could get enough suckers down below, I could get, use those as sacrifice branch and get some taper on it. Anyway, I thought I'd show you uh, this boy look at this one here not only did it survive it's thriving it's gonna have to take a another big cut in this to get to the next stage so as I shoot this video I still see a whole lot of work yet and although I am reducing inventory I wish I could reduce my inventory faster any of you out there want to start a bonsai nursery and need good inventory, come and talk to me. Let's make a deal. Oh, here's another one of the air layering in progress. And the big juniper over there having problems, uh, air layering. And our famous one in a dozen. Okay, so anyway, this is Hero saying goodbye. I'll see you again real soon in another chapter. So this has been a kind of a uh, tour of the nursery. We haven't done it for a while. Okay, take care, everybody. We'll see you again next year.